Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Um, dear Amos, I have to say uh, thank you for organizing this really nice symposium, necessary for um, reproducibility of data, and um, it's a good, really good platform to get uh, to give also a good uh, view of, of uh, a cell line repository uh, where I work since uh, two decades already. <laughs> And, but it's, it's my, my last year, so I go in retirement late next year. And it's a nice uh, opportunity to meet all you nice people from ICLAC and uh, from the standard uh, developing organization. And uh, so a real pleasure for me. Okay, and um, fascinating. Um, we did not talk to each other, but it is perfect fitting of our talks together. Because I have uh, really a minor problem, obviously a minor problem to, to tell you today, um, but um, it's, the consequences are really severe, and I will show uh, in, in a few uh, minutes. So, um, yeah, finally, cancer cell lines. Very nice introduction to cell lines and the cross contamination situation. Cell lines have been, uh, so this is a really uh, a beautiful tool to work on cancer research because, uh, because they have uh, been the, the, the backbone on cancer research for, for, for decades. And um, so finally, I, I give also a very, very short introduction into the situation. So this is a picture of mine for, for uh, this uh, nice work of, of Nicole Surin. And um, what you see is um, we can, we need reproducible scientific data because it is shown you waste too much money. It's nearly one billion US dollar a year is wasted on wrong cell, lines, cell line models. And even these uh, papers going out of these scenarios, um, they are misleading. And this is, um, uh, what we have to, to act on. And uh, what you see here is um, where there's a patient, you get the tumor uh, biopsy, um, you can establish a cell line from this. And as long in, in, in this green area, you use authenticated cell lines or even subclones of this main uh, population, you will get the valid data. So the opposite is nicely explained by Amanda, the cross-contamination situation invading um, um, of, of a foreign cell into uh, the, the establishment situation. So this is cross-contamination at source. And um, if there is a little bit proliferation uh, advantage of the foreign cell, so it will be overgrown. It's just a question of time. So finally, interchange and also mislabeling also uh, contribute um, to this uh, situation. But what is really connected, and this is also endangerment uh, uh, for, for reproducible scientific data, is this section I want to focus now on. And um, the endanger endangerment is done because, uh, or, or by chromosomal instability, I will give an example of this, and also by microsatellite instability. So these are the main drivers of the genetic drift. A lot of science, scientists call this genetic drift evolution in vitro. So, but this is not, no real evolution because it's not connected to any natural selection uh, processes. This is uh, really genetic drifting in vitro uh, conditions. Okay, and... Um, yeah, finally, um, I will go further now to, to explain uh, what uh, loss of heterozygosity in the first line is meaning uh, to a cell. Because when we do SDR typings, um, um, when we are lucky, we get um, the, the reference profile from a, a completely heterozygous cell. And so carrying maternal and paternal uh, chromosomes there is a nice uh, diploid um, or heterozygous SDR profile. And um, yes, somehow there are different loads of, of, of uh, um, uh, causing uh, events of, of uh, copy loss, loss of heterozygosity or copy neutral. This is just meaning uh, that the whole um, 
maternal or paternal chromosome is lost in it to avoid the mitot mito uh, uh, mitotic catastrophe. Uh, the, the resting one is, is only doubled, but this is finally going to uh, to convert a double signal into a, um, a single SDR um, uh, a profile. And um, I will not go into deep today in, um, in the microsatellite instability situation because microsatellite instability is caused by the deficiency of the MMR uh, system, a DNA repair system. And uh, which is normally wiping out all uh, replication errors during DNA replication. And um, this is, uh, this drifting can cause um, a third or multi alleles at, at one. And this is not meaning that this is occurring in a single cell, even if cancer cells are t t tree or tetraploid. Um, um, these are sidelines. All the sidelines um, can carry 10 and 11, or 10, uh, 12, or 11 and 12. Uh, so these are the situations, but this is not present in a single cell. We have done a lot of uh, single cell uh, authentications, and we know that you normally get only a diploid uh, situation or profile from, uh, from these cells. Okay, um, and this is always connected to the events or to the phenomena of uh, loss of heterozygosity as well as microsatellite instability because uh, there is a, a yeah, silent danger by wrong uh, cultivation uh, techniques. And this is an image of Kazai et al. So he's working at the Riken cell bank and um, I forgot the citation, sorry for that. And uh, so he uh, experienced that um, if he is growing a culture to complete density, uh, proliferation is stopped and has to start again in the next passaging. So and if you have done this too often, if you have an over passaged cell line, then you will work out, so the, the side lines within the population which, which are always present, uh, they get a chance uh, to fit better the, the new conditions. And then you have the outgrowth uh, of, of a specific uh, single clone or a sideline of, of, of cell. And, and that means if you have an outgrowth, you have lost <clears throat> a lot of properties from the whole uh, cell population. And this is a problem. And um, now I will go to in an example because uh, memories are no, no, nice examples are uh, lasting longer. <laughs> and um, so there's a pro uh, from, from the lab of Perot, um, there's a report that the cell line THP1, which is an acute myeloid leukemia cell line, <clears throat> and it's, it's characterized by uh, chromosomal translocation and it is fusion uh, two different uh, parts of, of a transcription factor together. And this is uh, and they, uh, it's doing a reprogramming in vivo and this is the cause for leukemia in, in, in man. And finally, so this is uh, one of the most important uh, cell lines for studying um, yeah, uh, leukemia and um, which genes are affected uh, by uh, the transfusion uh, gene. And um, so they worked out, uh, uh, Noronya, um, Nandita Renor, they, they obtained uh, THP1 from two major biorepositories. The SDR profiles were really very, very close together. And, um, but finally, they found out that the discrepancies um, they uh, worked out uh, mainly were due to uh, the heterozygosity. And finally, um, they argued that one of the THP1 cell lines is not any more a reliable model for studying leukemia. And this, although authentication has taken place. So this is um, a, a real problem. And uh, now I will um, try to convince you what they have done. 
So they did uh, from <clears throat> the THB1 cell line from repository A and B, they did uh, whole genome sequencing. And finally, they could work out by a new tool, which is electronic um, SNP karyotyping. Uh, they worked out, for example, that uh, chromosome 6, at least in part, is completely homozygous, um, which is indicated in, in a single blue color. And um, uh, while um, the uh, cell line from repository B is heterozygous for this area. Another yeah, really uh, drastic uh, situation is found on chromosome 13. So you see that uh, from uh, repository A, uh, the whole chromosome or, or the long arm of chromosome 13 uh, at least is homozygous, while from uh, repository B, this uh, part of the chromosome 13 is completely heterozygous. And that means, so authentication has taken place. They are from major cell repositories. All claim um, these cell lines are authentic and useful for our research. And finally, um, so I, I skip just this uh, in this image. Um, when they worked out with the transcrome, uh, tra transcriptome NGS data, they, can, uh, they had um, a, um, generated a heat map of this of AML-related genes. So that is mean the transfusion um, or the, the, the fuse transcription factor is affecting a lot of other genes. And look at this. So um, the row on the right side from the repository B, these are all the target genes which are uh, upregulated by, uh, by the chromosomal translocation. And this is not found anymore in uh, the cell in THP1 from uh, the uh, repository A. Okay, and this is, um, yeah, uh, finally a little bit disturbing the picture Amanda and Jamie has drawn this morning, so it's not always black and white. And uh, this is uh, completely disturbing a little bit, but there are ways out because uh, th these findings has also initiated uh, to find and to build up new tools uh, at our uh, repository. And uh, first of all, uh, the first step should be have a look into uh, Cellosaurus because, and I must respect to your work, tracing all these SDR profiles to single papers in this is an amazing work. I have really <clears throat> uh, much respect uh, doing so. And here is already um, shown that there are the chromosome 13 and uh, 13 here and chromosome 6 here. Um, that there are the differences, so the loss of heterozygosity is indicated um, at, at a, lot, yeah, a lot of other uh, uh, cell repositories. And the sad story in this case only is um, that only three repositories are dealing with the right um, yeah, type of THP1, while 12 others are not. And that means that 90% of, uh, I guess, so this is an estimation, that 90% of all uh, THP1 cell lines out from major repositories are not suitable uh, to do leukemia research with regard to acute myeloid leukemia. Okay, and uh, to, to give further, yeah, this is um, yeah, our own uh, study. So if you use uh, different algorithms to work out um, the similarity matches between different cell lines, and um, you work it out that only Tanabe algorithm is giving the difference <clears throat> and not the, the, this one of uh, uh, John Masters. But uh, okay, anyway, um, there is a, we thought we have to, to come in, into action and what we did is finally we uh, created, uh, yeah, I have to also mention Laura Steenpass, she is new head of our uh, department since three years, and one of the first things we have done then is was creating cell dive, and cell dive means um, 
that we um, have meanwhile 160 cell lines are um, yeah, read out for the transcriptome by NGS techniques. And uh, so we have uh, even, uh, of course, we have our own um, SCI profile search, which is also public, so anybody can use it. And you see, I just have listed here all the different uh, THP1 uh, cell lines, including, so in red, uh, these are the LOH uh, um, uh, problems in, in cell lines, if they are there. And um, for a much better control, because we have the differences, these are old cell lines, they have been established in the 90s and uh, genetic drift is taking place. So this is biology, uh, uh, finally. And um, so we, we put on um, uh, the transcriptome data on, on our hub. And, and what you can do now, I bring you really um, quickly through. You can give in, for example, you can choose an entity so, so far we have, fo have been focused on leukemia and lymphoma cell lines, but we have also, meanwhile, uh, breast cancer uh, cell line panel sequenced, and this is, uh, uh, will be um, updated in, 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 in this year. And um, so, so finally, you can um, give in the genes you are interested, and you can uh, follow up uh, in all cell lines distributed um, exclusively by DSMZ. You see here THP1 is uh, completely positive for one of the leukemia genes, DNMT3B, MICE 3 HOXA7, and so on. So this is helping uh, the customers because they can look uh, in, into the physiology of the cell and can check out um, if this is the right system uh, or not, and if uh, are the genes expressed, I'm interested. Okay, finally, uh, I have to speed up a little bit. Um, there, yeah, cell lines have been the backbone of science or cancer research of the last century. Uh, this century, um, because we have much better knowledge about how a solid tumor, for example, is looking like we have uh, so much uh, bystander cells, uh, we have a scaffold and the vessels and, and all the, this stuff. And this, uh, this, uh, these cells that are contributing because there is cross-talking between the tumor cells in blue. Uh, this is a hypoxic center which is dying off normally. And uh, loads of immune cells and uh, these uh, cancer-associated uh, fibroblasts, the calf cells. Okay, and um, I was really impressed by a work from the Netherlands, uh, Kester al. they published in Cell Genomics, and this is really an amazing work, um, because uh, what they did is they isolated primary colo uh, colorectal cells uh, using CRISPR-Cas9 technology to set up the most found mutations in these cells. So this is complete knockout of, of P53 and uh, specific cells. And they, um, so you see the different um, mutations, they put a single or twice or triple into the cells. Um, and they are uh, marked by, by colors here. And they put also, this is a retroviral uh, in, induced uh, barcode for identification of, of the cells. So, and then they let these cells grow and um, they formed nice organoids. And then finally, they um, did whole genome sequencing in multiple time points during evolution. Evolution is meaning to grow from single cells to this organoid. And uh, finally, they, uh, what they did then is using the VGS data, um, they uh, have been able to work out uh, copy number variation um, of, 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 this, uh, of, of all the single cells, a huge world, and uh, single, uh, single uh, nucleotide variants, identification, so real mutations in the genome, uh, frame shifts, stops, and, and so on. And finally, tracing 
um, all these developments in uh, one dendrogram, and this is looking like this. And the fascinating point is uh, coming now because these uh, markers, chromosome for, for colorectal cancer, loss of chromosome 18, and also later on chromosome uh, or part of chromosome uh, four, both alleles are, are lost then. They give rise to the most aggressive uh, uh, colorectal cancer you can get, so really aggressive CRCs. And um, so this was uh, a really convincing work uh, they, they did because they really mimic tumor evolution in vitro. So this is a very new step. And this is also um, yeah, motivating us at DSMZ uh, to also look for new uh, uh, cancer models. But uh, first of all, I have to to mention the main players, uh, so uh, finally Jesse Bohm and also Todd Gollop from, uh, from, from the Broad Institute and fin financially supported with Barry Obama, so this is 2015. And finally, um, and they um, formed a um, community of uh, yeah, high level uh, labs, uh, I, I should say, and they uh, worked uh, in the human cancer model model initiative and um, and these models are exclusively um, distributed by ATC by no other bioresources uh, but so finally um, William Sellers um, CEO of Novartis before and he is now uh, the scientific director of the, of, uh, the uh, cancer cell line factory within the Broad Institute, in the right hand of him, uh, Moni Tseng. They have the aim to converse any tumor type into a cell line, spheroid, or organite model. And they are doing this by genomic profiling of donated cancer, cancer tissue. And this not after 50 passages. This is done after passage t two, three, or four. And um, so they do then um, screening a dozen, dozens of cell culture condition combinations, huge work. And um, so finally to, to grow the cells. And in case of successful cultivation, they do a whole uh, transcriptome sequencing again. And uh, then they do a comparison of the original tumor with the clinical data of the patient and they go then for the next neighbor. And this is enabling uh, a very, very close uh, model to the original tumor. Uh, finally, um, there's a selection of the best cultural condition based on uh, tumor uh, genomics. Finally, um, they are really successful. I never expected that they has work out so a tremendous amount of, of uh, cell lines from rare and really difficult uh, tumors. And they, so over 700 models they uh, got so far. And uh, look at this, 47, so nearly half of all these 700 models are of 3D and organoid um, uh, morphology. And so this is showing us this will be part of the future, also at uh, DSMZ, so we have a nice co cooperation. And um, I will show that we have, uh, due to this collaboration last year, we have been able to complete accession five new cell lines. And you see uh, this is Neuro048, yes. Uh, it, it's a long name, but uh, we clearly want to indi in, uh, indicate this is his uh, CCLF model, so one of the new ones. And um, yeah, you see this is growing at, at spheres or uh, little organoids uh, are always uh, present, starting from, from uh, finally uh, single cells. But <clears throat> as a biorepository, we are uh, dealing with uh, cell lines which should be infinite because otherwise uh, it's so much work to get them accessioned into cell bank. It's really expensive to do so. And finally, if they are on a primary state, uh, they will die off after reaching Hayflick uh, limitation. 
and therefore I, I have seen the need uh, to establish uh, um, a new version of the so-called TRAP protocol. This is measuring telomerase activity in, 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 uh, in, in cells, in, or animals, vertebrate cells, I have to say. And um, because there is a problem, the primary cells, there is an end replication problem at the telomeres and every, in every cell division, they lose uh, this uh, single strand part and this up to 70, 80, 90 divisions is needed and then the telomere is um, gone, for example, and then the whole chromosome gets to be unstable and this is uh, leading the cells into a crisis and then they finally die off. Okay, and um, so and we would discuss this with uh, CCLF already and uh, they promised us that they have been really very successful in to induce telomerase activity by the cultural conditions. I, I have to be honest, I did not believe this in front of the project. And uh, so I f finally, with my uh, beautiful technician Silke Feinrich, um, we uh, adopted an original protocol from the 90s into a fluorescent version of uh, the trap assay uh, by doing a lot of uh, new things. And um, we have been able to create a very, very sensitive um, assay, which is, um, this is the analysis in the capillary, capillary electrophoresis. And you can see nicely uh, every um, telomere length, so this is the telomere repeat, GGG, ATT, and um, the, we can finally work out um, how active a cell line or the telomerase activity is in, uh, in, within a cell line. Okay, and um, finally, um, so these are controls, positive control, negative control, this is a cell line which is, there's another way to, to prolong uh, the telomeres by a homologous, homologous uh, recombination. But this is control uh, to another cell line, which is uh, not, and this is heat in, inactivation. And you see from uh, two of, of the five uh, CCLF cell lines, which are all positive for telomerase activity, that, we, that they differ a little bit in the condition, but we get the nicest results only using 9,000 cells. In this uh, uh, assay, which will be published uh, in, during this year in biotechnics, uh, that we can go down to, to almost 50 cells or maybe less um, to, to get clear signals of telomerase activity. Finally, I come to, my, uh, to, to the end. Um, so we are happy that we have the first uh, new cancer cell line models in our collection. And um, yeah, this is a short summary at the end. Um, so we need new qualities for increased reliability of scientific data. I have shown overgrown, overpassaged old cell lines, they can have a problem. Um, and, and so finally, SDR70 as a reference technique is indispensable. I have not shown this, but it doesn't matter. There's an endangerment uh, by ex vivo, in vitro, uh, LOH and MSI. There is a need for evaluation. I have to convince Amos a little bit to work together on this topic um, to get uh, the most uh, reliable SDR reference profiles which should show maximum of heterozygosity. Um, I see the need um, of uh, eSNP uh, karyotyping for very exclusive models to follow up copy number uh, variations. And um, this uh, addressed also to dear Jan, <laughs> all the new models are free of FBS and um, they have uh, an improved biological relevance because of the, uh, the, the neighborship, they're very close together. And <clears throat> so basic uh, uh, research on, on, on tumor cell de development should be better and um, also drug development should be uh, meet better targets uh, doing uh, this with uh, uh, new, new tumor uh, models. So finally, um, 
we are going to at DSMZ going to extension uh, our cell dive uh, data to to further tumor entities. Uh, next will be colorectal cancer. Then we have pros promising media medi mediated reprogramming and organoid differentiation technology um, imp implemented by by Laura Stanpass. And um, expanding, uh, we are going to expand the CCLF collection of difficult and rare tumor models. Okay, uh, this is my former team, my, my PhDs. Um, so at the end of my uh, yeah, working uh, time, uh, my, my technicians. And I have to mention, of course, Laura Steinpasser with a lot of new input in our department. Sonja Ebert, uh, responsible for uh, the CCLF collection, and Claudia Pomerenke. <clears throat> she is our uh, bio, uh, bioinformatic uh, expert, and Kurt Opov, uh, which is uh, yeah, uh, doing all the risk assessments uh, we need for, for new cell lines uh, to look for viruses and other infections. Okay, thank you so much for listening, and um, that's the end. <laughs> Hi, um, a bit of an off the wall question. Where do you see automation in these new sorts of models, use, use of automation to actually standardize and get the reproducibility going? Yeah, not, diff not, not, not easy to answer finally. I see automatic, uh, automation on all high put through techniques, which means sequencing and, and all this stuff. So, uh, there's, but uh, finally, um, there's still uh, good manual work uh, affordable um, and, and necessary for, from, from, from our technicians because uh, cultivation protocols, even for these, are uh, a little bit difficult to culture. This is indicated in our catalog that the CCLF uh, models are not easy, uh, but we give um, clear guidelines how to handle them, and um, this will be work you never, I'm, I'm pretty sure, this can, can never be automated. Thank you for your presentation. I'm very grateful you mentioned uh, one word, karyotyping. <laughs> I'm a geneticist by training. Ah. <laughs> so uh, I have the feeling very few people do that still today, though it's one of the oldest methods in cell culture to realize what's going on. You know, I remember a paper from 1948 or something telling us whoever uses immortalized cells that cells are changing and you can see it on the karyotype. Now we have these modern methods with next generation sequencing and other people think, oh, that gives, is a solution. But I don't agree. They, um, what you get in an NGS is an average. You get the dominant, whatever in your population is heterogeneic, you get a sequence, yes. But it does not represent the cell culture which, in front, which is in front of you. I have to correct this a little bit um, because uh, I'm a great fan of uh, karyotyping and I miss my colleague Rod McLeod. He was a really nice person from Scotland and he did all these karyotyping in our lab in, at, at, at a very high level, including the sky uh, uh, staining of, of uh, this, uh, different karyotypes. Finally, uh, the N NGS technology has developed meanwhile so far that we can uh, really nicely and more precisely than ever uh, cover the reads um, to the density of 
yeah, estimate template, which is, and this is the basics for e-karyotyping or SNP karyotyping for the estimation of um, copy number uh, variations in, 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 in cell lines. So this is really, and uh, finally, there is no other way because all the cytogenetists are gone. <laughs> So there's nobody um, who is uh, really uh, has, a, has a good education in, in, in this technology anymore. I'm, I'm sad about this, so I'm a big fan of karyotyping, yes.